How's it going, everybody? It's Jesse, and you guys are joining me today for our little St. Patrick's Day uh, celebration with these St. Patrick's Day gnomies, or gnomes as they're actually called. How's everybody doing today? Hope you guys are doing fantastic. I know I am. Just going to give you guys a few minutes to get people on the session. Whoops, let me see if I'm muted. Got to make sure that I'm not muted. Okay, fantastic. Let me check my mic level here. Hold on one second. There we go. I think we're good. What's happening, Vivian Alvarez? How are you? Sue Cripe. Hi, Sue. Let's see, Brianna Crace. We got a first timer today. Hi, Brianna. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, hi Gloria. What's happening? Happy Saturday, everybody. So today, obviously, we're painting the St. Patrick's Day theme. Theme and as I like to do, I, I jump on a little early, uh, right at one o'clock or so, one o'clock my, my time, which is about six minutes away, we'll start talking about the supplies and things like that, okay? Just want to remind all of you guys that are joining me today, know that those of you that are early next, uh, the 10th, I think that's Wednesday, um, March the 10th, we're doing this awesome, I call it awesome, horse theme that I call the horse whisper. A couple of people suggested that name a few days ago, and I really like it. So that's what we went with. So this is on the 10th. Okay, for those of you that are interested in that, go check out the event tab here on Painting with Jesse. Then on St. Patrick's Day, got this cute little leprechaun, okay, that we're going to be doing on the 17th. This is right on the 17th. You guys can go check that on the event tab. And then I'll be updating some more over the next couple of days with more events that I'm gonna be adding through March. Lisa Guarino, what's happening, Lisa? Let's see, Karen Dorsey Heareth says, hello, Jesse, so excited to watch this one today. Need some new gnomes here at my house for St. Patty's Day. Well, there you go, fantastic, happy to have you. Paula Cooper, how's it going? And then Eddie, I think Eddie's painted with us before, Eddie Vendesevich, so welcome back, Eddie, if I'm not mistaken. Kathleen Killian from Idaho. What's happening out in Idaho today? Hopefully everything's great. And then we got Kika Diaz saying this is Emily and Sophia's first time on here. Awesome. So we're going to have, I don't know, pretty decent crowd today. So we're, like I said, just a few minutes before everyone jumps on. For those of you that are not aware, I am simultaneously live streaming to both Facebook and to YouTube. YouTube gives you a few extra options where you could pause, back up, forward, all that good stuff. Uh, so if you guys have a chance, we would rather have the options to be able to back up, pause and that, all you know, all those little extras. You want to go do this on YouTube, okay? The YouTube channel is Painting with Jesse. Uh, so Painting with Jesse, just like here on Facebook. For those of you that want to go check that out, check this live stream out over there, there is that benefit. And of course, the video is being recorded, so for those of you that want to do this later, or maybe you have to leave partway through today's session, you'll be able to get to that recorded session here on Facebook. It'll be under the main live tab at the top of Painting with Jesse. And then, of course, if on YouTube, you just have to look through the videos and you'll see it there as well. In case you guys can't join us today or you have to uh, leave a little early. Okay, so anyway, there is that. Let's see. Tammy Helm says, not live, you can pause, not back up. Uh, so on YouTube, I believe on YouTube you can. So on YouTube, you can pause it, you could back it up. I think uh, live streams that I've seen on YouTube when I've joined in in the past, that was something that I was able to do. And then a few people uh, over the last few weeks when I do these, these sessions, they tell me that they, they can do these things on YouTube. But maybe, maybe it's a little bit uh, more limited. Can you guys hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up. Somebody says, I, I see somebody saying there's, no sound. Uh, can you guys let me know in the comments that you can hear me? My audio level over here looks good, but just let me know if uh, you guys 
Let me know that you guys can hear me. Okay, good. So Gloria Marie says, YouTube, yes, YouTube allows you to rewind when you're live. Okay, interesting, Tammy. Okay, weird. But again, guys, if somebody could let me know in the comments that you can hear me. All right. So Tammy Helm says, I can hear you just fine. Okay, good. If any of you guys ever experience any audio issues or video issues, often what you'll have to do is exit the whatever platform you're on, exit out, come back in and try it again. Sometimes that fixes whatever glitch you might be having. Of course, sometimes the glitch is on my hand, but looks like I've solved the audio issues that I had with this new platform this last, you know, intermittently throughout the last sessions that we've had. So, but yeah, it looks like I, it sounds good according to everybody that's hanging out with us today. But anyway, everyone, just want to thank you guys again for being here. We got a couple of minutes before we officially get started. And again, I'll talk about the supplies and everything else at that time, but got a bunch of stuff planned through March. Not everything is up on the event tab. So just kind of keep on the lookout because I'll be updating the sessions over the next few days. Okay. So for those of you that are interested in um, finding out what else we're going to be doing, there are a couple of events currently scheduled. I think we got three events currently scheduled uh, officially. So if you went to the event tab here, I'm painting with Jesse on Facebook, you'll see what's coming up on the schedule. I will be adding more events to March. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Okay. Okay, Judy, cool. Yeah, so Judy Herring is saying she was having uh, problems hearing and then she turned off the phone and then came back on and it looks like that's working out okay. So yeah, so if you guys experience any of those issues, video, audio, exit and come back and you guys should be okay, all right? So just a little tip there, something that I've seen over all these audio, all these video sessions that I've done over the months and months and months, okay? So, but all right, it is one o'clock, official start time. Again, I want to welcome all of you. My name is Jesse, and you guys are on here on Painting with Jesse. Today, we're going to be painting this cool little Valentine's Gnomes painting that I have over on the side. Okay, I'm going to be using a 16 by 20 inch canvas. That's the size of the canvas that I have here. It's the same size as the original. They look a little different in size on the screen because I've got the original sitting behind the um, canvas I'll be painting on. We're going to be painting the background first. Okay, then we're going to draw over everything. I'm using chalk to draw, white chalk to draw over the background. I'll be using a blow dryer. Once I'm done with that background, I'll be using a blow dryer to speed up the drying process. So, okay, hopefully you guys have a, a blow dryer handy. If not, you'll have to give it a little time to dry. Usually acrylic paint though dries quickly depending on where you are. If it's too cold or wet, humid, it might take a little longer. Also, depending on the type of paint that you're using. That could be a factor, but acrylic paint generally dries pretty fast. Five, 10 minutes is usually all you need, but uh, because I do want to speed up that process a bit, I'll be using a blow dryer. I mentioned I'm using acrylic paint, okay? The colors that I'm going to be using for the background are a mixture of green, black, and then a little bit of white. So the color on the background is kind of a, a, a drab or olive uh, green. Uh, so I'll make a color similar to that. I'm not looking to make, create the exact same background color as that, but that mixture does entail something similar to that. We'll give you, we'll, we'll, uh, you'll, you'll be using white, black, and green. We'll talk about that once we get to that point. Like I said, that's the first thing we're going to be doing. So background will come in first, but the other colors that I'll be using today, a little bit of, let me, um, let me pull the screen forward like this, some orange. Okay. I'll be using a little bit of a combo. So, so for the skin tone, I don't have any actual skin tone. I'm going to be mixing a little bit of pink and some yellow to create the skin tone. If you've got red, white, and yellow, that will also work. You could also tint it a bit with a little bit of brown if you'd like, again, for the skin tones. And I'll be going over that again once we get to that point. But the colors that you can mix if you don't have a skin tone color already, right? There are some tubes of skin tone that you can buy pre-mixed. If you don't have any of that, you can mix some pink uh, or red and white and uh, orange or yellow, white, brown, any combination in there will get you a skin tone color. But like I said, we'll, we'll talk about that some more once we get to that point. Then of course, got a couple of greens I'll be using, okay, for um, the hats, 
the shoes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and then some black, and I think I've already mentioned yellow. Okay, so those are the basic colors I'm going to be using for this painting. Of course, you guys can change things up if you guys want to make it look a little different, get creative. You guys feel free to do that. Oh, I do have a little bit of brown in there that I'm I'm going to be using to outline uh, things like their noses. Some of the areas I'll be outlining in brown. Okay, also the coins, the little golden co gold coins that our little guy in the center is using, uh, they're outlined in brown. So I will also be using a little bit of brown. Okay, as far as brushes go, let me give you guys a close up of what I'm using today. So the main, the big brush that I'll be using for my background is this one inch flat. Okay, it's a fairly uh, kind of an in-between size. As long as you got something similar to this, you're going to be okay. This is a one inch flat brush. I'll be using this for the background. If you got a larger brush than this, perfect. If you got a little bit of a smaller brush, no worries. But this one inch flat brush is what I'll be using for the background. Okay, the next brushes that I'll be using, I've got a number 10 flat. Okay, another flat brush. It's a little smaller than that one inch, about half, half the size, about a half inch brush. Okay. I've got a number eight filbert. Basically, this is a brush with a rounded top. Okay, let me see if I give you guys a better view over here. So this brush has a rounded top. Okay, I'll be using this. This is good to paint around curved edges like the beard, the hat, the shoes. If you don't have some of these brushes, don't worry about it. As long as you've got something kind of similar, you're going to be okay. Then I've got a number six flat. This is a small little flat head, squared head brush, similar to the large one inch flat that I'm that I'm using, same shape, just smaller, thinner, uh, good for working areas like the hats, maybe the balloons, just painting in small the small areas. Then I've got a zero round brush, okay, a little zero pointy. Uh, this is a little liner brush, real skinny, good for outlining, good for detail work. Okay, that's that. I also have a little backup number three round brush, but uh, again, as long as you guys have something similar, you're okay. You don't have to have the exact same brushes as I've got here. Uh, whatever you've got, let's make them work. Then I've, I typically, in between painting, I always have a water cup where I put, I have my water in there. I leave the brushes inside of this throughout the entire process so that the brushes do not dry out in between steps, okay? You don't wanna let acrylic paint sit on your brushes outside of water because they will dry and it could ruin your brushes, and you don't want to have that happen, okay? But all right, let's see, what else am I, for, am I forgetting here? Uh, paper towels, lots of extra paper towels. They're good for cleaning brushes, but of course also good to clean up messes that happen. And of course, I mentioned my blow dryer. I got a blow dryer in here that I'll be using to uh, blow dry the paint once we put in the background. I think that's everything other than my piece of chalk. I have a basic white chalk here that I'll be using to uh, draw in those gnomes once we've painted the background. If you're gonna, if you got um, colored pencils can work, pencils can work. Of course, it all depends on what color background you're using. If you've got a really dark background and you're trying to use, you know, regular pencil, you might have a hard time seeing your colors. So whatever background you've got, uh, you wanna make sure you've got something that contrasts against that so you can see your sketching, okay? But all right, so, Let's see if anybody has any questions. Diane, gone. What's happening from Frisco, Texas? Yes, Yvette Rodriguez, this will be available afterwards. Okay, once again, I just want to, I want to repeat. This video will be available immediately afterwards. As soon as the session's over, you'll simply find, you'll, if you're on YouTube, you just look through the you know, old videos, you'll find it there. If you're on Facebook and you're painting with Jesse, check the live tab, live tab at the very top of the main Painting with Jesse page. You'll see all the old videos there. This one will be right there, right at the top. Okay, but all right, everybody, let's get moving here. Uh, we are going to be painting for about two hours, 45 minutes. That's an approximation. Could be a little longer, could be a little less. Again, if you don't have the time to paint all the way through, stick around for as long as you can. And then uh, if you have to leave, no worries, come on back and finish with the recorded version of uh, the session, okay? Which is basically, Exactly. You'll see exactly what everybody else sees during the live. It's just recorded. And of course, Facebook or YouTube there, you'll be able to pause, back it up, et cetera. Some people like to use the recorded session better because it does allow them to, uh, you know, pause it, catch up, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. There is no rushing this. 
Got to take our time with it. So there we go. But all right, here we go. Let me change the view on this thing, give you guys a better view of what I'm going to be doing on that canvas. Okay. So I've got some paper. I've got a paper plate here with the main colors that I'm going to be using for my background. So I've got some black. I've got a couple of shades of green in there. Whatever green you have, if you're using a greenish background, you're good. This is kind of an, an olive, drab olive color that's that I'm using for my background. I'm going to uh, make a similar color to that with this combination. Now, a couple of things. The colors that I use for those are uh, the paint brand that I use for the original is a brand called the Master's Touch. Okay, and those those paints tend to be a little bit on the glossy side. What I'm using today is a combination of Artist Loft. Um, I do have this, uh, the green that I'm using is from uh, Anita's All Purpose Acrylic. And then the other one is an Appleberry Spring Green. So the, the white is a, actually a, a, uh, an Artist Loft color that I have. Anyway, I'll be using that combination. It won't be quite as shiny as what's on the original, but that's okay. So here's what we're going to do on a separate plate. I always have extra plates to use as palettes. This is where I create our mixtures. Okay, so it's always good to have extra plates. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a bunch of green, just going to grab a bunch of green with my, my big brush here. Okay, my one inch brush, bringing a bunch of green over. I'll probably grab a little bit more. Now, if you're new to acrylic painting, or if you're new to the page here, what you'll often hear me say is you want to make, you want to mix enough you want to make sure you have enough of your mixture when you're mixing colors it's it's important that you have enough to cover whatever it is that you're painting completely you don't want to run out of out of your mixture part way through because having to remix your colors can be tough you, trying to color match can be can be difficult so what we're going to do is slowly now i'm grabbing a little bit of black with the same brush we're going to as we're making our mixture we want to make sure that we mix enough to cover the entire canvas. We're going to cover the entire canvas with this color. Okay, so slowly, slowly, we're just adding paint, grabbing some more black, mixing it in. Now, some of you guys are going to be painting this in a different color, right? So whatever color you're happy with, it's perfectly fine. Also, you're going to, some of you are going to make different choices with your gnomes, the hats, maybe balloons, I don't know, whatever it is that you guys want to want to do with yours. Absolutely, it's your painting. Feel free to get creative. So, all right, we're getting there, a little more green. Now, again, I do this slowly, right? I'm just kind of slowly mixing my colors till I get the color that I want, and then I just need to make sure that I mix enough where I cover the entire canvas. That's very important. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I, I usually paint the sides of my canvas, the edges, right? So over here on the side, the top. So I want to make sure I, I, have, I can mix enough to cover those areas as well. Some of you are drawing this or creating this on a, um, on a small canvas or, or perhaps you're doing this on a um, drawing paper, et cetera, right? You're not, you're not, you're not all using canvases. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of white. What, what the white is gonna do is it's gonna make it a little bit chalky. Gives a little tiny, a little bit of a chalky feel to the, to the color. So that's what I'm going for. Brightens it up just a little bit, but it makes it kind of chalky. Now how do you know when you've got enough paint mixed? It's a little tricky, especially at first. When you're first beginning to paint, oftentimes it looks like you've got enough, then you start to paint and you're like, oh no, I'm. I'm out. So if you're going to make a mistake, make it on the, you know, make it on the side of having way too much, but not enough. But all right, I'm getting there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my big brush here and I'm going to dip it into my water cup. All I'm doing is this. I'm taking my brush, dipping it into my water cup, just bringing a few drops of water, a few, not a lot. Whatever's, whatever water's in that brush, just gonna, gonna bring it in and blend it in with this color. Now this color here is a little bit, a little more, maybe uh, a little brighter. 
a little more green than the original over there. And that's all right. Once I got the color that I want, and it looks like I'm pretty close, I'm going to start applying it to that background. All right, here we go. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go from one side to the other. All the way across, you can use vertical brush strokes if you'd like, horizontal brush strokes if you'd like. But if you do, do nice long brush strokes like this, your background will get nice and smooth. Okay, again, you can go vertical, you can go horizontal, you can even do something like this where you're just crisscrossing throughout, kind of a random pattern. Whatever you decide on, stay uniform. Use the same brush stroke throughout the entire uh, background, painting in of your background. And you see what I'm doing here? I'm just getting long brush strokes. Let's create these really nice, smooth, real subtle lines in the background. And then I don't know that I'm going to do two coats on this background. I like this kind of streakiness that I'm getting. But if, but if you don't want this streakiness, you want it more solid like what's on the original, Load up a little more on your paint, okay? And, or you can also do a second layer on top of this once this dries. So for those of you that joined me on the Valentine's one, we did some Valentine's gnomes last month, and I used a bit of a streakier background than what's on this one. We'll see here. Again, if you don't want the, you don't want any streakiness in your brush strokes, just make sure you add load up on the paint so it's a little thicker. Don't go super thick, but load up on the paint. Spread it around a little bit less and constantly load up on the paint. But I'm digging the streakiness. Almost, almost makes it look like there's a, look like there's a wood board wall behind them. But I think I still have the Valentines. Actually, I don't think I do anymore. But um, I'd show it to you for those of you that are, that uh, didn't paint with us last month. So the way I do this, for those of you that are new to the page, I will show you a step on my end. And then you, of course, implement it on your end as soon as you catch what I'm doing. I usually give you guys a little time, a couple of minutes at least, depending on what it is, how complex it is. And then I go to the next step. Okay. In between steps, I typically will look over at the comments section. Answer questions and that kind of thing. The most common question that's going to come up is, hey, is this video recorded and can we watch it later? And the answer to that is, it sure is. Both on Facebook and YouTube, you'll be able to catch the recorded session of this. As soon as it's over, I just press save and it gets saved to both platforms. Okay, so there I did the front. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the top edge of my canvas and the side edge, left and right. And I know everybody paints at a different pace. I talk about this all the time. If you're a speed painter and you're kind of waiting around going, Jesse's taking too long, 
what the heck? You know, do your best to kind of stay with the with the group. Um, unless you unless you you know if you want to jump ahead, if you're comfortable jumping ahead, doing your own thing, absolutely, feel free to do so. But if the pace is too slow, you know, again, you can also paint with the recorded session. If the paint is if the pace is too fast, do your best to keep up. And if you fall too far behind, same thing applies, right? You'll be able to record or paint with the recorded session. All right, so I'm doing my left and the right. What I'm not going to do is the bottom edge underneath the side of my canvas or the edge of my canvas. Uh, the bottom part, right? I'm not going to do that because I'm painting on an easel. If I do that right now, the painting, the canvas will stick to the edge of, it'll stick to the easel and we don't want that. Okay, I'm going to step over across the camera really quickly. Just want to come over, oops, come over to this side here. Make sure I get this edge nice and clean. So again, folks, I'm liking this streakiness that's in my background. It's how I did the Valentine's one. If you want a more solid background, this is much more even in color. Whoops, let me raise the, the neck of that easel. This is more even throughout. I just used a little bit more paint on the brush when it created those brush strokes. And in some cases, some of you, depending on your paint, you may want to do a second coat once this dries a little bit, right? And wait a few minutes and do a second layer over the top and you'll get a nice solid background. All this streakiness would go away, okay? But I like this, I like this. I'm just gonna do a few little touch-ups here, smooth out my lines just a bit, and then I'm, I'll am i go over to the comment section and see what we got. See who's joining in today, give you, give you some shout outs perhaps. I'd like to know where you guys are painting painting from, from where you're joining me from. So if you guys could let me know in the comments section where it is that you're hanging out with us from and maybe who you're painting with. A lot of families like to get together and do these friends. There we go. All right. So my brush, I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to catch up on this step. I'm going to take my brush, put it right into my water cup. Okay. All the other brushes are outside next to the, uh, on the table next to me. They don't go into the water cup until, um, until I've used them, okay? But all right, let me take a look at those comments, see what we got. Hang on one second, everybody. Let me make an adjustment here to my camera view here. My angle. All right. Okay, everybody. Melissa Davis, how's it going up in Ontario, Canada? Hello to you. Welcome. Thank you for being here. And I just realized I didn't change my uh, my background. I still got my Easter background from yesterday. So that's okay. I'm looking at the graphic on the screen. I meant to change it to a little St. Patrick's theme, but that's okay. Easter is also, you know, not too far away, but uh, all good. Karen Cushing McPherson says, my daughter Erica and I from Stansted QC. There's a little tiny letter next to it. I don't know if that's, little CA is what I'm seeing. We just finished the bunnies this morning. Awesome. Christina Wade, hello from Newfoundland, painting with my daughters. Awesome, Christina. Welcome to you and your daughters. Ruplika Biswas, how's it going? Welcome back. And then Paula, Johan, can't say your last name, jo uh, Paula, <laughs> Montreal. Looks like Quebec, QC. Um, then Gloria Mani uh, Marie, yeah, we need, we need a, we need a St. Patrick's background. Yeah, for sure. I just now noticed it, and I meant to change it. The little again, the little graphic around the painting. Anyway, it's all good. It's okay, next time, next time. Hi, Elizabeth. Hola, Becky Schilling Plath from Virginia. How's it? No, hi, hi. I'm from Virginia. Yep, 
<laughs> I need to get glasses, folks. But all right, let me go ahead and I'm going to step away from my desk here for a moment. You guys got a couple of minutes to catch up on this, and then I will take my blow dryer. I'm going to take my blow dryer and um, finish, make sure that dry, everything dries nicely on my background before we start to draw. But give me one second. Coffee. My coffee was too far away from me. I couldn't reach it. My coffee and my, I've got a little uh, bottle of water over here. But all right, everyone, let's take a look at the painting then. So like I said, I'm going to use the blow dryer here to speed up the drawing process. Although I can already tell just in the few minutes since I stopped painting, my background is already pretty dry. Okay, so if I wanted to, if I wanted to make this a lot um, more even solid, I would do another layer of paint over it. Again, I like that streaky look. When I first was going to do the original St. Patrick's, uh, the, gnome, the gnomes painting, I was going to go ahead and use a streaky background to kind of match my Valentine's gnomes. But then I started painting and I, painting and I was like, ah, let me see what the solid background looks like. I do like the solid background, uh, but the streakiness, in my opinion, gives that background a little bit of dimension, makes it look like they're standing in front of something. So anyhow, my choice is that I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this. I like it. But for those of you that if you have a streaky background, especially if you've got a blow dryer, use your blow dryer. Um, go ahead and dry it pretty quick, you know, take a moment to dry it and then do a second layer over the top. That's going to make it nice and solid and even throughout. It's going to clean it up. Okay. But let me go and use my blow dryer on this. All right, that didn't take very long. Like I said, it was already pretty dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to be drawing with chalk, as I've already mentioned. And where'd my little chalk, my chalk likes to roll away from me. So basic white piece of chalk is what I'm going to be using for this, okay? Now, this little guy in the middle is what we're gonna start with. We're gonna start with a little gnome in the center. To make it easier, what I like to do is I'll find the center and I'll eyeball it. I'm not sitting here measuring this, trying to be exact, but I will take a little step back. I'll look at the canvas and then I'll find the center. Okay. About the center of, of, you know, going down the middle of it like this. And this is a really light line that I'm putting in. Chalk is easy to erase. If you're using pencil or something like that, just make sure that, you know, it's something that you can very easily erase. The reason why I like using chalk is because I'll take a paper towel, wet it just a little bit, and if I come over and wipe it, the chalk will, will go away no problem. Okay, that's what I like about chalk. Now, this is a really light line. When I start to actually draw the gnomes, uh, you'll be able to better see what I'm doing. But what this line represents essentially is the center right down the middle of Mr. Gnome there. Okay, now the other thing that I want you guys to do, this part of the hat is approximately Again, kind of same thing. It's about the very middle of the canvas going across like this. About, right? Again, we're just eyeballing it a bit. I'm just going to do a quick, I'm using my hands here to, to eyeball it. So here, kind of same thing. Find, find the center of your canvas across the other way. And draw a nice little line that goes across like this. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered, right? But so you have an idea. Gives you, gives you a point to start with. So we got, this is about the center of the canvas. And I can see it's a little, a little higher up than the actual center, but not by much, okay? It's almost, almost exact. 
And that little dot there, the little point where the two lines meet would represent somewhere about where the hat is, the center of the hat. And this is just an approximation. So that's where we're gonna start, okay? What you wanna ensure, for those of you that are using the stencils, of course, this part is a lot easier because you just grab your stencils and put them right on over uh, on your canvas. You can start tracing those if you haven't already. So that's what you wanna start doing now. If you're using the stencil, go ahead and put it right on that canvas and go ahead and start with the trace. Okay, if you're drawing like, uh, like I'm going to do, what you want to note is on my 16 by 20 inch canvas, there's a little guy in the center, the hat, the width of the hat is approximately about three inches, okay? So right here in the center, what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna do like a little curved line, which is gonna represent the top of that, actually about the center of, center of the hat, okay? And maybe bring it down a little bit so you have the bottom edge of your hat. So again, let's make this line represent that bottom edge of the hat, okay? And all you really need is the bottom part. I made it a little bit thicker because I kind of was playing with the chalk. Here's what's nice about chalk, working with chalk. I've got a little bit of a little water here on this, on this uh, paper towel and I can just come in here. If I want to clean something up easily, right? I just cleaned up that top edge and left the, left the line that I actually want to use. Again, this here is about, represents the bottom of that hat. In the center, right there, we're gonna start with the little nose, a little curved, little oval shape for the nose. Now everyone's gnomes, especially if you're drawing them freehand, they're all gonna look a little different, okay? So don't stress too much. Draw your gnomes your way and you're gonna be perfectly fine, okay? Then the next part of the nose, the other, the little cheek comes around like this, okay? And then over on the other side. Now these two little circles on the sides are a little bit smaller, right? There, there's a difference in, in size between the center, the little circle in the center and the ones on the sides. And these are kind of ovalish, they can be circles. Just had to make a few little adjustments there. Okay. From there, we're going to go ahead and draw the outline for the beard. Okay, the beard. We're going to go all the way down on each side. We're going to start with just a curved line on each side. Now, you don't want to make them too wide, right? If you're, you're drawing this freehand, you don't want to make this so wide where you're pushing your other gnomes too far out. So be careful with, with how wide you make these, make sure you're leaving enough room for the gnomes on the sides. So just a little line like this, curved line, we'll add the little jagged parts in a little bit. So this is gonna come down. Now the bottom part of the gnome, right here is about two inches approximately. Just kind of do that. Nice and easy, nothing to it. Okay, once you've done that, we're gonna go ahead and jump up to the top. We're gonna to create the brim, the brim of that hat. Okay, so here we're just gonna go up a little bit on each side, kind of like this. Then we're gonna draw a little curved line that goes up. And of course, the center part of that brim is a little higher, a little wider at the center, a little taller at the center than it is on the edges. So we just go like that, nothing to it. Let me give you guys a close up. Okay. Nice and easy. What's happening? Amy Adams says, hello. First time because of Brianna Crace. Awesome. Welcome. Hi, Penny. How are you? Gabby Castro from California, or she, she might, is she answering somebody? Hi, Gabby. I'm in California too. Jen Stanners says, painting with my kids. Awesome. Good way to spend your Saturday, in my opinion. A little painting with family and friends. 
Okay, so there's the brim. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna create the top part of the hat, right? And it's basically the top part of the hat. You can look at it as a box with curved, slightly angled edges, right? It's, but this is essentially a large box. And what you can do is this. You can start on the edges, bring up your lines are slightly angled outwards a bit, kind of like this. And they could be a little curved as well. And then over the top, you're just gonna connect them. Now, you don't wanna go super high on your gnomes because we wanna leave some space. If you're gonna create the little balloons that they're holding, you wanna create a little space over the top. So just kind of be mindful of how high up you go and put your little top there. If it's too high or too wide or too big, then make your little adjustments, okay? There's the top of that hat. I am gonna go ahead and draw the belt. Actually, I'm gonna start with the buckle, a little box for the buckle, kind of similar to what we did with the hat. With the hat. There we go, there's, there's that. Draw the little black part, the upper edge of the belt. Okay, and then on the inside, draw another little square. I'll give you guys a close up in just a sec. Don't forget the little, I'm not sure what you'd call that little pointy thing there in the center. Having some technical difficulties with my. Okay. All right. So take a moment on that. You got about 30 seconds to catch up. What's happening, Alexandra? She says, I'm back. Good, Penny. Glad you're doing great today. Let me take a little sip of my coffee. My, uh, my buddy next door, I work in a professional, my studio's in a, little, in a professional building in, in town. My buddy next door is an accountant and he has a, a Keurig machine. So before I started today, I went over there and stole some of his coffee. But okay, here we go. We got the hat, we got the cheeks. On our little guy there in the center, what we want to do is, let's see, let me take a look at it really quick. Let's go ahead and do, let's do our little pot of gold in the center. So the little pot of gold, you don't wanna go too large, right? So be careful how wide you make it, but essentially it's a little wider, a little bit wider then the cheeks are wide. But if you make it a little smaller, a lot larger, as long as you can fit it in your area, you're perfectly fine. And it's just a large bowl, right? We're not worried about the hands right now. Just kind of a, you know, you're drawing a, a, a large bowl. Okay, something like that. And then if you want, simply make Make a little, it's kind of like the uh, outer edge of where your gold's going to sit. We're not gonna add any, de any detail to that gold or anything like that. You're just putting in, just kind of making, blocking off the area for your gold, okay? Now, our little guy has some hands, okay? So the hands are pretty easy. For this one, it's almost like you're drawing a chubby, a balloon-like letter E. Okay, so we can start here on the side, outside of the pot a bit. It's gonna go in. Okay. A three, it's a three, the number three, with one more little hump. So when you draw this part here, it's like the number three with one more little hump. And then of course you come over to the other side and do the same thing. Draw your line on the outside. I'll give you a close up in a moment. And this time it goes the other way. One more little hump. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is the little shoes. Okay. And uh, they kind of look like kettlebells for those of you that are familiar with, uh, you know, kettlebells that are used for working out. Uh, 
almost looks exactly like a kettlebell. But well, I'm gonna start with the one on the right hand side. Start with the bottom part of the shoe. So I'll just put a little line across like this. Okay. Then it's got a rounded top. And then I'm going to come in here and add the tongue of the shoe. Let me clean up the inside there so it gets a little less confusing. So all this on the inside, I'm just going to remove it. And there's your, there's your shoe. It's like a little dome with almost like a, a little rectangle over the top of it. Okay. Then we do the same, actually we do one more thing here. We're just gonna draw the little buckle where the buckle is gonna be. Don't get too fancy with it. Just put in a little area in there where the buckle is gonna be. All we need is a little simple line like that. And we're good. Just like that, we come over and do the other shoe. Little dome. Dome over the top. Okay. Then we go up, back, and down. Clean up the inside to remove all the all the lines in there that are, might cause a little confusion. Then we draw our little line for the buckle. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys about 30 seconds to catch up on that. Then we're going to do the little jagged edges around the beard and we are good to go to the next gnome. Hi, Amy. All right, so sounds like you, okay. So you're just gonna hang out and watch with us today, okay. Well, hello to you, Amy. Thank you for coming in and hanging out. <laughs> Gloria Marie says, need a winery next door. That would be better, Gloria. Absolutely. Let's see. Ainsley and Melissa in Queens, New York. How's it going, Ainsley and Melissa? Thank you for hanging out today. Okay. The outside part of the beard. The little jagged parts, nice and easy. Just gonna go through here, and I'm gonna. This extends out the edge just a little bit, okay? Maybe a little. Just pick your little spots. Okay, mine has three on each side, and then I can go in there and clean up my edges a bit. That's hilarious. Probably be bad news though, Gloria. That would be bad news, having a winery next door. Okay. There's our first little gnome. Take a look at yours. Take a little step back. Look at it from a distance. Make sure you have everything, right? You didn't miss anything. Now is when you could go in there and clean things up. If you're using chalk, don't stress about cleaning it up too much because when you're going to paint right over it, when you paint right over it, you're going to remove those chalk lines as you paint. If you're doing it in pencil, you do want to clean up a little bit. Sometimes pencil lines can peek in through your paint, depending on um, how transparent your paint is. Sometimes pencil lines can be a little tough to cover up. So all I did is I went in there and removed the line that was going through the hand, the edge of our um, pot of gold. I removed that. Remove that on the inside of those hands. So it looks like the hands are a little bit, it's easier to see the hands this way. Okay, and then you can kind of do that wherever you want, clean things up, just touch, make some touch-ups, okay? Um, there was something that I was going to say and then I lost my train of thought, so give me a moment. Let me look at it. No, I think that's it. Oh, the little, here on top of the pot of gold, there's a little rim. I'll be adding that. I might as well do it now so I don't forget because I'm notorious for getting little steps. So just adding a little lip here on the edges. 
Okay, give, let me give you guys a close up for the rim of that pot of gold. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and do the little guy all the way over to the right. Now I'm going to turn the canvas a little bit towards me to make it a little easier to get over to this angle. Actually, I'm going to move the canvas over towards me also, okay, so that it's easier for me to work on that edge without having to lean too far over. So really similar situation is what we got with the original gnome, the one in the center. The, the big difference is that it's the two guys on the sides are a little shorter, or their noses anyway, are a little bit lower than where the, the guy in the center's nose is, the top. So, right, if I was to draw a line across the top here like this, across like this line here, the noses are a little bit lower. So they're a little bit shorter. Um, makes the guy in the center a little bit more prominent, just a touch. If you notice his hat's a little bit higher, he stands out just a little bit more. He's, the, he's like the, he's the leader, right? He's the guy in the center. But if you guys want it, you can make them nice and even. Their nose is the same level, all up to you. But with that in mind, so I've got this line that goes across like this, right? That line's still there. I'm going to start with the center of my little gnome here. Now, I want to make sure we, what you want to be careful with is you leave enough uh, width, enough area to be able to put them in, including the little hand in there, right? The little hand is right about right here. So just make sure you don't make the center part, the middle part of his nose, too far over to the left or too far over to the side. So it's almost right, if I was to do this, there's almost the same amount of, of uh, distance between, so, so if I do this, there's almost the same amount of distance. So he's almost in the middle between, this little part of his nose is almost in the middle between um, this part right here of the canvas. It's almost right in the middle, almost, okay? So you can kind of use that as a gauge. So here we go. But again, he's a, this little part of his nose is a little lower, so I'm just going to drop him a little. I'm going to start with that center. We're not worried too much about the hat just yet. We could, if we want, start with that hat. We'll add it here in a moment. There's our little center. Uh, actually, I'm going to bring him over to the right. Bring him over to the left a little bit more. He's too far over to the right. You always want to gauge as you go so that you don't end up drawing. You're drawing, 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 all of a sudden you're like, oh no, I've got to erase everything because I made it too far over to the right, too far over to the left. So I'm just going to bring them over a little bit more. Just a touch. Now I can go ahead and do another little, do a little cheek, right cheek, and then his little left cheek. Remember, we want to leave a little space in here for that little hand, even if it's a little bit, for that hand to peek in there where he can then um, put his, have his balloon there. So now I'm going to take this, do the outer edge, the bottom edge of his hat. From there, we can start his little beard. Again, keep it, keep it kind of narrow, a little narrower than what's going to end up with because we're going to have those little jagged points. So bring this down. Comes down like this. Okay. And then this part right here, actually, I'm going to bring them down a little bit lower. Should be, this little point should be lining up kind of close to this one. Beauty of chalk. There we go. It's easy to work with. Now, if I want, I could come in here and clean those lines up on the inside. Just to make everything a little bit more, more, uh, it's easier to see, clearer. And the chalk that I'm using is just real basic, uh, basic chalk that you'd use it, that would, you, you would use in a classroom. Okay. All right, let's go with the hat now. Hat goes up. Kind of curves up a little. Goes up into a little point. Okay, kind of like that. Add a little triangle right here. 
and maybe has a little peak over here. Let me clean it up. Don't forget, take a little step back from time to time. Make sure you're looking at your piece from a bit of a distance so you can gauge better what you've got to do, right? Little adjustments and things like that. We're now going to be adding the little shamrock that's at the top of the hat over there. The little uh, four leaf little clover. We're not going to be adding that. Okay, we're going to leave that. We'll, we'll add that later. Okay, for now, we're just going to go ahead and leave that as a little point. Hi, Tammy from Kentucky. What's happening, Tammy? Let's see. Fanny Orala says, hi, I like your video. Today is my first day here. Can you say hi to me? Hi, Daniela. How's it going? Everybody say hello to Daniela. Are there any birthdays? Anybody celebrating birthdays today or anniversaries? Let us know in the comments so we can celebrate with you. We can say, I wish you a happy birthday or happy anniversary, etc." Okay, there's our little hat. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and add the little shoes. Okay, same, real similar process to what we did before, a little kettlebell action. So a little, start with the bottom part or the top part, either way is gonna be okay. Okay, gotta add the shoe tongue. Same thing on the other side. And you guys notice, holding the chalk nice and loose, not holding it all super rigid or really close to the top. We could if I wanted to get really specific and do kind of something like this. But this is a more relaxing way to, uh, to draw. Okay, let me clean it up. And these little feet, I got a little bit, of, they're a little closer together than on this guy. No big deal. It could be a little bit wider. And you guys make your own choice on that. I may change that and widen them out a little bit to make things a little bit more even, more uniform throughout. But that's a choice that I can make and it's does, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, right? It's kind of a preference. But now what I'm going to do is make the little jagged edge. Don't want to go too far over because I want to leave a little space in between there for that little hand that's going to be popping out. Okay. Clean up. Okay. I can, and then I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and add the little circle here, a little circle for that hand little hand that's sticking out. Okay, and of course there's gonna be a balloon, that come, a little string that pops up in between the two guys there in a moment. Actually, I'll be, I'll be adding the balloon a little bit later. Not worried about it for now. So let's take a look at what we got. Oh, buckle. Okay. So you guys got about a minute to catch up on this. Buffy, how's it going? Okay, here we go. Moving on to the next gnome. Uh, let's see. 
So this little guy, kind of same, a similar situation. You want to gauge how far over you're going to make them. So, and you want to kind of keep them about the same distance. So the, the distance between these two is about what you want to keep for the distance between these two. Kind of, doesn't have to be exact. So I can do this. I can use their noses to kind of gauge that. Okay, I can kind of do this with my finger, just simply quick measurement with my fingers. So that tells me about where the center, where this little guy would be. And of course, his little nose is a little lower, right? Level-wise, is a little lower than this one. So there's the nose on, on that one in the center. And we got to do the cheeks. Okay, top of the hat. Okay, let's go ahead and go with the hat now. We're gonna go up. Maybe this is a little bit more curved like this. Okay, this side goes up a little. Slightly curved. A little wider there. I'm going to go ahead and bring that over and then add a little triangle here. Kind of a triangle. And then add another little triangle that comes down. Same thing, we'll add a little uh, shamrock later. But I can clean this up now. When we're all done with the drawing piece of it, we'll kind of step back, look at it, and see if there's anything that needs to be adjusted. Okay. But for now, we're just going with it with what we've got. And again, just want to stress everybody's gnomes are going to look a little different. Don't sit there stressing too much about trying to make them look exactly like mine, even between these two. There's going to be a difference. No big deal. Okay, beard. It's a real similar process. Leave a little space in between. Remember, we're going to add the little jagged parts, little jagged points, but we come around. They end up about the same uh, part, same uh, place underneath. Okay, all the way across. Let's go with the shoes. Shoe tongue. One thing you do want to make sure as much as you can is that the shoes are all at about the same level. Okay. So this little guy's a little too high for mine. Let me lower it, lower it a bit. Okay. So about right here is where the line would be across if I was to draw a line across the floor. Nice and easy. Other side. Same thing. Clean it up. Buckles. Okay. Then, of course, we got the little jagged edges on the beard. Leave a little space for the hand that's holding that balloon. Kind of like that. Cleaning it up.
Okay, there's a little close up. Now again, what you guys are gonna are gonna want to do is take a little step back, look at your drawing as a whole. Oh, can't forget the little hand. Little hand right here. Right? Take a step back, take a look at it. Is there anything anywhere that you need need to adjust? Now is when you want to make the adjustments, or at least it would be better if you made them now. Take a look at their hats. How wide are they? Are they wide enough for you? Proportions, are they good? For example, maybe this little guy. I can make him a little bit, his little hat a little bit wider. I think it'd look better that way. Look at their noses, their cheeks. Are they proportionately kind of similar? Okay, so a little step back. Are their shoes lined up? Okay, so what I do want to go ahead and do is uh, let's go ahead and do the, the shamrocks now. We're going to do them. We're going to do them together, right? At the same time. We're doing both of them at the same time. And all they are, you, know, little, you can have a four leaf clover on yours. Mine are a little three leaf. They just seem to fit a little bit better. It's going to be a little tricky. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. So normally these, something that small, I wouldn't use. A big thick piece of chalk for those. I would just do them in a you know with a pencil. But I'm gonna go ahead and try it with the chalk. Pretty basic. I'm gonna make it maybe a little bit bigger than I normally would. Whoops. Makes it easier for you guys to see. Okay, there's one leaf. Okay. There's one leaf there. Over the top, another one. Okay. And then, and of course, it connect to the top of that hat. A little, a little uh, stocking hat. And of course, same thing on the other side. Real similar. This one's going to be a little trickier for me to do it without putting the canvas back on the easel. So start with one side. One in the middle. That one needs a little bit of work, so let me fix it. All right. Now, for those of you that joined me yesterday for the Easter bunny, Easter spring bunny painting that we did yesterday, uh, where'd it go? Oh, over in that corner. I'm sure you guys can see it. Probably out of out of shot. I shared all the pictures that I received up to this morning. I shared them earlier on a post on Facebook. If you guys want to go check those out, quite a few of you guys did a did this and. Got a bunch of really nice pictures from you guys. Okay, but if you guys are interested, any of you, any of you that didn't catch this one, this video is available. You guys can go check it out on that main tab, live tab at the top of the Facebook page. You'll find it there. Same thing on YouTube. You'll find it over on YouTube if you guys want to go participate, participate with the recorded version of that. All right, everyone, we've got everything drawn in. Okay, um, so. We're going to go and start doing the painting part of it. Oh, sorry. We do not have everything drawn in. Let's go ahead and draw the balloon. Okay, the balloon. Um, trying to think. You know, we're going to leave those for last. We're going to leave those for later. Okay, we're going to go and get into the painting part of this, and we'll leave those for later. So if you're using chalk or pencil or whatever, make sure you guys hang on to that so we can uh, get to that. But we'll do that later on. Okay, I understand some of you guys probably aren't going to be using balloon, doing balloons. Some of you are going to do some other designs you guys got a lot of you like to get nice and creative with this so but all right what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and start with the painting uh painting of the beards we're going to jump in and start painting uh i've, I've got a really bright orange that i'm going to be using for mine okay um so again i just want to go over the colors really quickly some of the colors that i'll be using on the inside of uh our little gnomes 
So orange, of course, orange for the beards. If you don't have orange and you have a red and a yellow, you can mix those to create an orange. Okay, so again, red, orange, red and yellow make orange. Uh, I have yellow here for the buckles on the shoes, the gold and the buckle on the gnome in the center's hat. For the skin tone, I'll be mixing pink, yellow, and maybe a little bit of white to get the skin tone color on my gnomes. You can also, if you don't have pink, you can do red, white, and then yellow, right? You can mix all three of those. And if you want, you could also tint it with a little bit, little bit of brown. So red, white, yellow, brown will get you different skin tone colors um, also, or pink and yellow and white brown combos. So we'll talk about that when we get to that skin tone color, but those are the colors I'll be using for that. Of course, I got some white and then I got a couple of shades of green and some black, but we're going to start with those beards. So I'm just going to take a plate here, pour out a little bit of my orange. I'm going to grab my filbert, my number eight filbert. If you guys are using a number five or a pretty much whatever size you have will work. But just to show you guys again what that filbert brush looks like, it's a nice rounded head. Okay, makes it easy to go around curved edges. So I'm gonna grab some orange, and this is a brighter orange than what I have on the original. I could add a little bit of red to it to tone it down a bit, but I like this color. So starting with the gnome all the way over on the far side, I'm gonna outline my cheeks and the nose. Now, acrylic paint tends to be a little on the transparent side, right? So this is the first layer that we're gonna be adding here. We're gonna come back and add other layers over this. At least two layers here, it's probably gonna take more like three layers to get this really bright orange. But we outline everything first, and then we can come in here and do this. Again, if you don't have a filbert brush, any of the brushes that I have, if you don't have those, it's okay. Work with what you've got. Do your best. Now here on the inside, once I've done my outlining, I can go ahead and start brushing, kind of following the shape of my beard. So on the edges, for example, I kind of brush outwards a bit. Okay, kind of like that. Again, it's going to be transparent, kind of, I can see some of that green coming through. Not worried about it. Okay. Now I'm going to do the one in the center. This is going to be a little trickier because there's, there's more to outline. Now, trick is find a brush that you're comfortable with. If you need a smaller brush than what I'm using, use a smaller brush. But I like to outline everything first before I start painting on the inside. If you're new to acrylic painting, make sure you don't get caught up. When we're layering this, when we're putting down this first layer, don't get caught up trying to make everything even and perfect. It's not gonna work. We usually won't work. Usually requires at least two layers to make things stand out against backgrounds, makes them more even, to make them even, things like that. It takes at least a couple layers. Often it takes three and sometimes more. So put the layer down and move on to the next step. Okay. What's happening, Donna Rubleski? Just Lauer. Hopefully, I didn't mess that your name up. But welcome. Thank you for being here. Says she's new to the page. Fantastic. Welcome. Welcome to everybody. We do a lot of fun stuff here on painting with Jesse. 
lots and lots of cool events. Started back in late March last year. So there are approximately 80 video sessions that we've done. And they are all available under the live tab on the main painting with Jesse Page here on Facebook. Got about maybe a third to a half of them available on, on uh, YouTube. So if you guys are inter interested in checking those out, you guys can go over there. Live tab on the main painting with Jesse Page here on Facebook or simply jump over to the YouTube page and you'll see a lot of those. Here on Facebook, you'll see all of them. For all ages, some are kid-centric, some are a little more complex, require more patience, more time, but a little bit of everything for everybody. Okay, so once, again, we're layering everything. So put your first layer down and move on. Okay, you guys got about a minute and a half. Take my brush, put it back into my water cup. Gloria, you have an anniversary coming up? How many years? You got it, Kelly Morrison. Absolutely. Catch the recorded session of this. Fantastic. What's happening, Robin? Robin says, just watching. Absolutely. All right. 27 years, Gloria. Awesome. Well, congratulations to you guys. Happy early anniversary. Okay, guys, so let's wrap this part up. Again, this is the first layer of the orange that we're going to do. We're going we're to come back and put another layer over the top of this. What I'd like to do next is color the hat, the green hat in the center. And maybe you're not doing green. Maybe you're doing a different color. They don't have to be, they don't have to be St. Patrick's gnomes, right? They could be whatever you want them to be. Just add the right accessories, the right colors, and you're good. So I have a few different shades of green in the original painting. You can make all the greens the same color. That's entirely up to you. I have this dark or darker green from Artist Loft that I'm going to be using for the hat in the center. Just a little bit darker than the green of the, of the other two hats. If you only have one green, that's okay. You can make different shades of that green by adding white or adding a little bit of blue to darken it, a little bit of blue and black. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm taking my flat brush here. Any flat brush will do. But this one here is a number eight flat. Okay, I'm going to take, just take some green right from here. And then what, again, what I do again is I just outline everything first. Now on these edges on the side here, I want to come right up to the very edge of the chalk. I paint, I, I'm doing this right over the chalk. So I eliminate the chalk edges. On the buckle, on, the, on or around the buckle, doesn't really matter too much because I've got some black paint, right, that I'm going to be painting over the top of that in just a bit. Okay, outline first. And then what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take my brush long ways like this and using a curved motion, following the curvature of that hat, I'm going to take this and bring it over to the other side. This curved motion will give our hat a little bit of dimension. OK. 
Okay, and then of course, got to do the brim. Now the brim can be a different color also. It could be a lighter green. That might look kind of cool. But I'm going to go ahead and do it the same green. Now I'm using the skinny part of the brush. Okay. If you guys need, again, if you need to switch to a smaller brush, please do so. The smaller the area, I know it's kind of obvious, but just in case. The smaller the area, the smaller the brush. Okay. And the same thing applies here. Now this green's a little bit, the coverage of this green is better than the orange down here. Part of the reason for that is that this background is already, already has a green in it. So the combination of that darker green background with the green here makes the layer look more even. But if this green was being applied against white or a different color that contrasts quite a bit more, you'd see it transparent, kind of like what this does, all this down in here is doing, okay? So that's the reason why that green looks a little more solid. Okay, so take a moment on that. You guys got about one minute before we move on. Always take a little step back, assess what you just did, see where you need to make a little adjustments. I need to add a little more green in here. But again, same rules apply, right? We're, this is our first layer of green. We'll come back and add at least one more layer over the top of this, and we'll be good to go. But okay, here's what I'm going to do next. To make it a little easier, now I kind of lied about the drawing part of it. I said, we, you know, we're going to, I think I mentioned we were only, the only thing left to draw were the balloons. What I want to do is I want to add in the little stripes on this hat. If you're going to do stripes, you can add them with pencil or chalk first. It just makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to. You can use the brush and the paint to do it with, but I'm going to go ahead and quickly add some stripes to my hat. And the number of stripes, of course, is going to vary depending on the size of the of your stripes depending on the size of your hat. But what you want to do is you want to curve the lines at the edges of the lines a bit. Okay. Right here when you get up towards the top, follow. You want to follow the curvature, the angle of your hat. Okay. So just to quickly do some lines there. Again, I'm following the curvature and the angle direction of the hat, a little cap. And then I'm gonna do, real quickly do the same thing over here. Just draw a bunch of little circles. The ones that get lost on the edges like this, you just see partial, partial circles. And they could be slightly different sizes. Some are gonna be bigger than others. Some are smaller, right? Something like that. The next step is going to be to decide the colors you're going to be using. So of course, I'm going to come over and do the green in here. And for, the, for my stripes in here, I'm going to switch to my number six flat brush. Okay, as long as you got some kind of similar to this, you're good. All right, Penny, sounds good. See you later. Oh, <laughs> got it, Gloria. You meant my page is having an anniversary. That's right. Towards the end of March, my page is having an anniversary. Sorry, I got confused. I think earlier when I was asking about anniversaries, is anybody celebrating an anniversary? Yeah, but you're right. We'll be, I'll be, uh, 
I'll look at the dates. Maybe we'll do something fun for, for the anniversary. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of green. Okay, take some white. I'm going to mix. Just I'm just going to make a slightly lighter version. Slightly lighter version of uh, the green that I just used for that original hat for the hat in the center. But it could be the same color. So I'm going to take this, especially here over the top of their noses. Got to be careful that I don't bring that green down, right? Don't want to cover up the nose, the noses and the cheeks in green. So there we go. There's one stripe. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we do. <coughs> Excuse me. A little anniversary painting with Jesse, with Jesse anniversary. And I saw somebody ask in the comments. Uh, let's see. Karen Dorsey asked, hey, Jesse, what got you started painting online? Great question. So this is actually an idea that I had about two, maybe three years ago. Uh, so I started painting online. No, sorry. I started doing in-person paint parties about four years ago. In-person paint parties, I think I started in 2000 and summer of 2016 and you know lots of uh people's houses schools sometimes churches businesses lots of businesses so that that blew up i got really really busy for about three years and then covid hit of course and that really messed everything up but i'd been wanting to expand and start doing stuff online so i saw this as the opportunity to do it. And I had the first event, I think it was very late in March or it could have been, it could even be early April. Cause I think the first thing we did was it was for Easter, but a week or two before Easter. So I don't, I don't remember. I'd have to look at the date, but anyhow, yeah, it was something that I wanted to do. And so here we are something like 80 sessions later. And, um, it's been a lot of fun. A lot of work, but a lot of fun. Now that COVID is lifting a little, um, starting to get people calling me about doing in-person ones again. Lots of in-person event. I don't know how many. In the four years that I was doing it pre-COVID, I don't. Maybe I did about three hundred parties or something like that. So it was pretty pretty good. Had a lot of busy weekends. Okay, so there's that there. Now I'm going I'm going to go ahead and lighten up my green a little bit more. Just taking a little bit of white. And maybe I'll take some of my lighter green. Let's see here. Where is it? I just like the look of having different colored greens in here. So you could also take a little bit of yellow if you want to give your green a little bit of a lime green look. Take a little yellow, mix it in there. It's going to take a little bit of yellow, put it over here on one of my other plates. Whoops, too much, too much yellow. So what I'm doing is this, taking a little bit of yellow here, just to scoop up a bit of it. It's too much than what I need. So oftentimes, so I'm using paper plates today. The problem with using paper plates, if they're just, you know, paper, like complete paper plates, not coated with anything, these are just straight paper plates. They get a little soggy after a while. So if you see my plate kind of doing this, folding, it's because of that. Anyhow, just made a little bit of a lime green by mixing yellow, green, and a little bit of white. And the white, the white that I mixed in was just to lighten it up. Let me get back to outlining everything. But just green and yellow would have given could give me a lime green.
Okay, there's that. Just gonna make a, a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit more of this lime green. So I can add a thicker layer over this. Don't forget folks, we're layering everything with at least two layers. So put your paint down, put your paint layer down and then move on. We'll come back to it, make it more even. Okay. <clears throat> While we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and do the shamrocks. <clears throat> Whatever green color you want, take one of your small, one of your smaller brushes. Could be a lighter green, darker green, up to you. So I'm using my little round zero brush here, number zero. So for those of you that don't know what I've been doing also is uh, I do private virtual painting events over Zoom. So for example, somebody has a birthday they want to celebrate. Instead of doing it in person like we used to, now we can do them online over Zoom. So you set up your party, we pick a painting, I set you up on my Zoom account with a date and everything else, send you a link, you send it out to all your guests, and then the day of, we, uh, you know, we paint together. And it's just your group. I can see all you guys, right? Those of you that have your cameras on, you can share, you can share your paintings with me. I can assess them, that kind of stuff. So for those of you that might be interested, I do do private sessions, virtual, private virtual sessions. As, uh, as again, as this cold COVID thing lifts, I'll be doing more of the in-person ones. I'm out here in California and I travel all over Southern California for those. However, I don't know that I'll be doing as many as I used to because I'd like to continue growing this online, this online stuff. But we'll see. Okay. Thank you, Roro. I really appreciate that. You got it, Karen. My pleasure. Thank you. I really, really do appreciate it. And then Carrie Allen says, my daughter Skylar is painting along, 11 years old, from Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, Skylar. Thank you for being here. Hope you're having some fun. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny, Gloria. Yeah, I would get a little nervous, too. You know, going, oh, my gosh, wait. Why is she talking about the anniversary? What? Is it today? <laughs> too funny. Too funny. Let's see. Oh, there you, Roseanne, are you talking about for, oh, you're talking about for the palettes. That's actually a pretty good idea. So Roseanne said, I'm not sure if you guys all saw her comment, but she's saying, I use ice cream pale lids. They work great. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Now, do you reuse them? You clean them up and reuse them? Uh, like the plastic lids is what I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about, because I think that would be, that would work perfect. Probably pretty easy to clean because of the surface. But all right, everybody, here we go. We're going to go ahead and add some white, white to the hats now. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my, um, my number six flat brush, just cleaning it up a little. All I do whenever I clean up my brushes in process, usually swirling, swirling around my brush inside the water cup takes most of the paint away. Right? So then I can just use a paper towel to do this, take off as much as the, of the excess as I can. 
Now I'm going to grab some white, just straight white color, just like this. And I'm going to come in here and add some to the white parts of the hat. And again, just want to remind everybody, because I know how the brains, how our brains often work. For some of you, you're going to be sitting there going, no, oh, but, but my white's not even. No, i got to make it super even. Again, normally on, this, on the first layers of paint, that's really difficult to achieve with acrylic paint. Even the best quality acrylic paints that I've worked with tend to be transparent and a little uneven when you first set down, when you set down the first layer of paint. So just want to make sure you're all aware and you don't sit. Some people will do this. I've seen it right in person. They'll, they'll grab paint, they'll spread it and they see that, you know, they can still see some of the background coming through and they're like, oh. and they'll grab more paint and they'll paint over the top and they're moving the, all they're doing is moving the paint around and the paint starts to kind of move from one side to the other. So even though you end up fixing one area, now that's all nice and even another area over here is going to, is going to look more transparent. So then they'll do it again. And eventually, as they're doing that, their paint's drying. The paint starts to dry at the same time. So now they're moving a combination of dried paint and, or slightly dry paint and then wet paint. And that starts to create a really weird mixture. Looks starts to look almost like, uh, in some cases, kind of like gum or putty. And it even almost takes that consistency. And they get really frustrated. So you just put your layer of paint down and move on. And we come back and layer over the top. So... I'm going to take my zero, my little round zero, and I'm just going to come in here. Whenever I put out the numbers for my brushes, again, don't stress too much. If you're looking for your number zero, you don't have one. It's okay. Use whatever you've got that's similar to this, right? <clears throat> Eyeball it. I give you the numbers for reference. And for those of you that might actually have these numbers, then you're good. Now watch what I'm doing with my finger here. <clears throat> put my pinky down on the canvas. As long as this area is all dry over here, I just put my pinky down or my knuckle. And I use that to stabilize my hand. There we go. Okay, take about a minute on that and we're moving on. We got we're about an hour and a half into this, so we've got about an hour and a half left, okay? Okay, good, Roseanne. Awesome. Good to know. Whenever I see those, I'm going to come in and start collecting those because, yeah, that's a good idea. I like it. Allows you to clean them up, and, yeah, definitely, I can see that. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So if you're new to the page, please don't forget to uh, like and follow whether you're on, you're on Facebook or YouTube. OK, 
Okay. Just re want to remind you guys that on YouTube, you're able to pause and back up live sessions. Whereas on Facebook, you can't do that. You can only do that on the recorded sessions. So just make sure you know whatever platform you prefer um, that you know that there's a difference between the two, but also that you guys please like and follow and share with your friends, etc. Okay, it's uh, an awesome way to help support the channel. Now, I do have a virtual tip jar for those of you that are interested, and I appreciate all of you guys that have used it. I know it's, I used to go through and try to um, thank everyone individually, but there's so much behind the scenes work that goes on that it gets a little tough to, to, you know, reach out to everybody, but anybody that's on here that has uh, supported the page through, a, through the virtual tip jar it is greatly, greatly appreciated. But here's the information for those of you that might be interested. I'm on Venmo, PayPal, both under painting with Jesse, all one word at painting with Jesse. Uh, Venmo, you might see my name up there, Jesse Mendeville. And then uh, on both of those, I have my picture up at the top. There's a picture of me holding a canvas or something like that. And speaking of which, I've got to update those pictures. Those are about two and a half, maybe three years old, maybe two and a half, somewhere in there. But I want to update those. And then Zell's my, my phone number, 951-217-2237, 951-217-2237. Again, for those of you that are interested, this information is listed in the description of this video as well. So don't, you know, don't... Uh, you guys want to look for that you guys can find it there but okay all right everybody here we go let's continue what i'm going to do next is i'm going to take a little bit of black before we do the shoes okay i'm going to take my the same little flat brush that i worked with a moment ago my number six i'm going to take some black okay i'm going to take some black here and i'm going to do the this little belt on top of the hat. Now I use the skinny part of the brush to outline, right? You could use one of the small round brushes for this. Or even a smaller filbert. What, again, whatever you're comfortable with. And then go through and... Uh, Fill it in. You probably won't need to, you probably will only need one layer of black wherever you're using black on your painting. Black tends to be a lot uh, more intense. Typically has more pigment in it, but if you notice that it's a little transparent also, same rules apply. Also, maybe your shoes are black. Maybe they're not green. But we're going to do the pot first. For those of you that are going to be doing the uh, dark green shoes like the ones I've got on mine, we're going to mix a little bit of black and a little bit of green. Careful around the hands. Then we fill it in. Okay. Once you've got your pot filled in, what you're going to want to do Take a little bit of, the, of your black. Well, if you, again, if you're going to match, you're going to try and do dark green shoes like I've got. It's taking a little bit of black, a little bit of green, mix the two together. Again, just want to point out that there's a difference between, even within acrylic colors, different brands 
will give you different results as far as finish is concerned. On the original over there, I used Master's Touch acrylic paint. Tend to be a little glossier. Okay. They also, for my taste, tend to be a little bit more difficult to work with. They don't flow as easily. Okay. Now, here I'm using a combina combination of the Fine Touch and Artist Loft brand, or an Artist Loft brand. Not as glossy, but a little bit smoother. Whoops. I made that a little bit too. Um, you know what? Let's see here. How should I fix this? I'm going to go ahead and do it like this. I'll add the buckles in yellow later over the top of this. Might take a couple of coats, but that's okay. I accidentally covered up the little center. That's okay. It is not a deal breaker. So, in other words, what I should have done is this, painted around, right? The little buckle part, maybe just the center. And left that center open for the yellow part. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and fix it. I'm gonna clean this and take a paper, a paper towel here, wet it, have a little water in there, and then I'm just gonna remove the paint that I put in the center there. There we go. Again, I'm just leaving a little space in the middle for that yellow part of the buckle. What I'm trying to do right now is just make sure that I go right up and over my chalk lines. Take a little step back from time to time. Look at your piece from a little bit of a distance so it's better to catch everything. If you're really close up, you tend to get a little bit of tunnel vision. easier to miss some of the uh, some things like proportions or uh, shape that kind of stuff okay So work on that for just a little bit. Oh, I know what I got to do. I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna take the my number zero, a little round zero. Scoop up the same color that I'm working with, and I'm just gonna come in here. Imagine that I've already got some yellow in there for the buckles, and I'm just gonna do the inside. Okay. There we go. All right.
Oh, let me put the put this back. Make it a little close, a little better for you guys to to see the. Whoop, whoop, whoop. About to knock stuff over. You guys got about one minute before we move on. And what I'd like to do next is we're going to paint in the buckles and the gold, just the, the layer, yellow layer for the gold. And then we're going to mix our skin tone. Oh, the buckle on the hat too. We're going to mix some skin tone color. We'll talk about that. Add a layer of skin tone. And then we can... Go ahead and start on the second layer on everything. We're going to leave the balloons for last. Those won't be too tough. Okay, back to my flat number six, cleaning it up, swirling around that water cup. Again, what I use paper towels for is once I pull the brush out of the water, I can do this. Just kind of squeeze any extra paint out. They don't have to be perfectly clean, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of yellow. Now I could use, I'll, I'm probably, again, better off using one of the round brushes, one of my small round brushes. But just taking some yellow in here. And depending on how transparent the yellow you're using is, it's going to require a couple of layers. You can put this on a little thick to give it some dimension, right? So varying thickness so i'm just gob grabbing a gob of paint and i can use your coins sitting in this pot so kind of like that later we'll we'll take a little bit of brown and mix and outline some coins and then we'll draw some coins on the inside of that so now i am going to go switch over to my zero My zero round, little skinny brush. Gonna scoop up some more yellow. Start with a buckle up here. Oh, everyone, what I'd like to ask, and I never ask this, I always forget. When you guys are all done here today, if you guys could go on my Facebook page. And if you're on YouTube and uh, have a Facebook page, if you guys could do this, that would be fantastic. If you guys could go to my Facebook page, my Painting with Jesse page, and then check in. Now it's painting with Jesse, right? J-E-S-S-E. -S -S -E. Just check in. Do a little check in. It helps my page because same thing, Facebook algorithm. I would be very grateful. A little check in box near the top of the page. All right, buckles on the shoes. Just using the little point of my bristles, right? A little tip going through. There we go. So you guys got about a minute on that one. Got a little step there. Uh, oh, my Mandalorian. So on the 19th, let me see if I can do this without. 
on the 19th, we have, this is an all-ages event. Lots of Mandalorian fans out there. Give me a sec while I grab the painting. On the 17th, I mentioned, on St. Patrick's Day, we're doing this. Event details are listed on the event page on Facebook. Here on uh, Painting with Jesse. I am providing a stencil. We're doing this from scratch, but I'm providing a stencil for it. On the 19th, a couple days later, we're doing The Mandalorian and Grogu. This one's called This Is The Way. And um, let me bring that up. Teach you how to draw this from scratch, completely from scratch, but there's also a stencil that I'm making available. If you guys are interested, go over to the event tab here on Painting with Jesse, and uh, you guys can look up all the information on both of those. Okay. Of course, this one's the 17th, and this one's the 19th. Open to all ages. I know uh, lots of people like to paint those. And then if you guys might, I don't know, especially for those of you that are new here, a couple of weeks ago, or about a week and a half or so ago, we did this Blue Jays piece. Okay, so you guys can go back and catch up on this one if you'd like. I teach you how to draw from scratch. I do make stencils available for those who would like the stencils. I usually put those stencils under the discussion tab on the main on the on the event pages. You go to the discussion tab, you'll see the stencils there. If you, can, if you have a hard time downloading from there, you can email me directly at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com, and I'll send you copies of those uh, PDF files. Okay? All right, let's continue with our painting. So I said we we're going to mix some colors for our skin tone. So what you can what you can use, again, the colors, the color combinations are as follows. Red, white. Yellow will get you kind of a peach pink skin tone. Red, yellow, white, combination of those. Instead of red and yellow, red and white, sorry, red, white, sorry, red, yellow, white. You can add a little bit of brown to that if you'd like. So red, yellow, white are the primary colors for skin tone. If you have pink, you can use pink and yellow. And you can lighten it right with white or, and you can tone it with brown. So what I've got on my plate here, you can also use orange and pink, right? Orange has red and yellow in it. You can use any combination of those. Let me grab some white here. So here's what I got. And the trick, the trick with this is to also mix enough to cover everything that you're going to be using this color on. Same thing, if you run out, if you run out of your mix, it's tough to color match. If you have to come back and remix your colors, which isn't that big of a deal, you can get around it. But just to avoid a little bit of a headache, you want to mix enough to do at least a couple of passes, right? A couple of layers. But Give me a second. All right. So I've got some pink here, some white, and some yellow. Again, if you don't have pink, you can use red and white to get to a pink. Okay, so there's my pink. Grab a little bit of white, mix the two together. I'm going to grab a little bit of this and bring it over to the side. Start adding a little yellow to it. It's a lot of yellow. Okay, this is a really intense color that I'm creating. Okay, now watch. Bring a little bit over of that over here. It's already starting to look like a skin tone. Take some white. And there we go. Now, if you want, you can add a little bit of brown to this. 
or black or whatever colors you want to tone this in either direction. Once you have the color down, right? Let's you can hold it up to your own skin if you want and go, oh yeah, looks kind of like, like a skin color. And that's what you would use. But again, you want to mix enough to cover all the parts of your nose. You're better off mixing more than not enough. Pro tip. Having to remix it, especially a skin tone, to try to match your previous colors, it's tough to do. All right, here we go. Now this is gonna require a couple of layers. So, you know, just keep in mind that we're gonna do a couple of these layers for your skin tone. I'm just looking uh, for my number three brush. Give me a second. What happened to my number three? Did I drop it? <clears throat> oh, that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and use my, my zero. Looks like I, I misplaced the brush because I don't have it in here. Did it roll away from me? Oh, there it is. I haven't used it yet. Okay. So now my, my number three. Just going to scoop up a bunch of this. Now, again, you could use a flat brush for this. Start over here. Now your nose is more prominent than the cheeks. So you want to overlap your nose over the cheeks. <clears throat> Go. Now we'll go with the other one in the center. I do the cheeks first and then do the nose. I'll take care of my overlapping this and then I can take the edges of the nose and paint over the, the cheeks, parts of the cheeks. And start to pick things up a little bit here. Get it into a slightly higher gear. Now this one, my center gnome has a much bigger nose than the other two on the sides. That's okay. It happened by accident. I wasn't really going for that. But no big deal. So let me take a little step back and make sure. If I wanted to make things a little bit more uh, more even, I'd just come over and maybe make these a little larger. Maybe I'll do that a little. Or I could go over and minimize all that by bringing cleaning it up a little on the edges, bring my orange in a little, bringing it in, right, covering up some of that, the edges of my nose and, um, but it's no big deal. I can, once I do the outlining, also I can also minimize how wide they look by putting my outline right on the inside edge of that peach, of that skin tone. We'll talk about that some more later.
right. Oh, the hands. We got to do the hands. The hand, and uh, right where while we're at it. Oh, my mic. Hopefully you guys were able to catch what I was saying. I apologize about that. Darn it. If I need to repeat anything, just let me know. Skin tones. Yellow, red, white, or yellow, pink. White to lighten things up. Brown to bring it down. I'll look at the comment section here in a moment, see if anyone had any trouble with what I just did. Because again, I didn't have my mic on. Should have picked up my voice, but might have been a little on the lower side. Okay, little hands right here. Now this color that I mixed is really transparent. So most definitely we'll be doing a second layer of this. And if you run out of your whatever, let's say the color that we're working with now, you run out of it, you just have enough to cover everything that you just did, did just now. Don't have enough for a second layer. That's okay. As long as we go through and add this, you know, a similar color in the second layer, we're okay. As long as you don't run out partway through with your second layer. Okay. So Jen Lam, the colors that we that uh, we used for the skin tone. Let me let me repeat that, guys, just because I know. I'm sure some of you guys didn't quite catch all that since I didn't have my mic on, but here's what I did. So I started with some pink. I'll mix the colors again. I started with a little bit, a little bit of pink. Okay. Now, if you don't have pink, you could do this with red and white. Okay. Then I took some yellow, mixed the two together. Little yellow, little pink. And now I can grab some of this mixture. This is kind of an intense mixture. You don't need it that intense for a skin tone. I just bring it over to another part of my plate. Okay. I grab some white. That combination should get you a color that's skin tone. Now you can add brown, black, whatever color you want to bring the shade in whichever direction you want to do it in. Okay. Again, pink, yellow, and then white. You could also start with red, white, yellow, and then use more white to bring it up. Okay. Bring up your, your skin tone color. Again, you want to try to mix enough to be able to cover everything, all of your skin in one shot. We will come back with a different another layer later and even things out that way. Okay. So take about a minute on that guys. And we're going to move on. Okay. Awesome. Glad to hear that Ale Alexandra. I wasn't sure it, when, when I first started to, you know, tweak my new format, I was like, you know, should I do that? I like it too. I, it makes it a little bit more personal. I can actually, see everything on my camera over there on my phone because I use my phone to, you know, to uh, record part of it. And then also my camera, I got a camera separate, it's, of course, focus, focused on the painting, but I like this format a lot better too. I like to customize the backgrounds and stuff. So it's really cool. But um, yeah, when I first was trying to figure out what I was going to do for this, I had an idea and then I was able to find software that made it work. It took me a while to figure out how to use it though. That was tough. But all right, what else do we got? Okay, 
So hopefully that answered your question, Jen, and anybody else that might have had that same question. So here we go. Here's what we're going to do next. Again, folks, if you start to fall behind, don't worry about it. You'll just finish with the recorded session, okay? If you're not able to finish with me right now on this session. Okay, we've got about an hour to go, so we need to kick it up a bit. We're going to do a second layer on everything. I'm leaving the balloons for last because I know some of you guys aren't going to do those. So I'm not going to waste too much time here in the middle or, or on this third, going into the third part of this, third hour of this. I don't want to mess with those too much. I'll leave those kind of closer to the end, the balloons. Okay, what we're going to do first is go through and layer. Everything that we've done so far is going to take a second layer of paint. I'm going to start with the orange that I used for the beards. Everything in here is all nice and dry. If yours isn't dry, you're not ready for a second layer, you may want to use your blow dryer to uh, speed up the process. So I'm going to switch over to my number eight filbert. Okay, again, if you've got a five or a or a, or a nine, et cetera, it's all good. If you don't have a filbert, that's okay too. Use what you've got. Just grabbing a bunch of this, this orange here. I'm gonna start with my guy over here on the end. So on this second layer, and who knows, again, depending on the type of paint that you're using, you might end up requiring a third layer to make everything's, everything really stand out. But you go ahead and do your outlining first. And then we fill it in. So again, just to keep things from looking a little too flat, what I like to do is I'll take my brush strokes, as I'm putting in my brush strokes, I'll follow the curvature of whatever it is that I'm painting. In this case, we've got a beard, right? So I kind of do this curve here towards the center. Maybe I do them kind of straight, but here on the edges, I paint towards the edge and I slightly curve my brush strokes to help give, uh, add a little bit of dimension, a little bit of, give it some depth. There we go. Let's see here. And again, we'll see. For me, in my case, I may do a third layer. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. We'll see what this looks like once it dries a bit. But work kind of quickly. Let's go ahead and go to the one in the middle. There we go. And already you can tell the difference between the two. These two that I've done a second layer on and this one over here that is only on the first layer. Big difference. Okay. So, and then if I wanted to, if I really wanted my beards to stand out, I would do a third one for sure. 
But like I said, we'll see. Maybe uh, maybe two will be enough. It's kind of a preference thing also, right? Some people are, may want to have a really, really intense, bright beard on the, on the gnomes. And some of you are going to be okay with having having some of that background peeking through. Because the background peeking through a little bit does help create a little bit of a, a little bit of variation in the beard. Gives it some shadows. Kind of nice little subtle variation that works. Right. There we go. Take a little step back, look at everything, make sure you didn't forget any edges. You guys got about a minute. Everything's a minute around here. All right. You got it, Melissa. No worries. Yeah, come on back. Just don't forget, folks. Send me. Don't forget as you're finishing up, or if you can't finish right now, right? You're stepping away for a bit because you got dinner or whatever it is that's coming up. You got some plans for a Saturday night. Please send me pictures of your paintings so I can share those with everybody. Okay. So you guys got about 30 seconds now. Counting down. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab some of my dark green that I'm going to use for the hat. We're gonna pretty much follow the same order that we laid down that original, uh, the original layer on everything. Pretty much. Running out of my dark green here. That's all right. Okay, so let me grab my flat. Number eight, clean it up a little because it's got some orange in it. Touch one of my other brushes. Okay. More green. Okay, just going to come in here. Remember, follow the curvature of your hat with your brush strokes to give it. It's subtle, but there is a nice little difference. Give it a little bit of a, of a 3D effect, dimension. There we go. Okay. And of course, we're going to do it down here also. Then also, folks, please don't forget to check in. Check in on my page. Not now, right? Don't do it now. But sometime later, just go over to my Facebook page and check in. Let's Facebook know that there's activity happening on this page, and so it's more apt to share it.
There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of a, a little bit of white. I'm going to use another plate now. A little white and some green. Just a little bit. Switching brushes though. Back to my number five, number six flat. So a little bit of green and a little bit of white. What am I going to do with this? Right over here. This green's a little bit, <clears throat> a little lighter. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> a little bit lighter than the original that I used, the first layer that, put, that I put on here. It's all right. All good. All the stripes. Might as well do my shamrocks too. Then I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, mix it in here. I want to make a little bit of a lime green, so a little bit of yellow, mixing it in here. And what are we going to do with this? You guessed it, right in here. On this uh, second layer, what I'm focusing on also is making sure that I'm covering up my, covering up my chalk lines, pencil lines if you use pencil. So I'm coming right up to that edge, painting right over, right over them, right? So I don't have to, to mess with cleaning those up at the end, even though there's going to be some that are, you know, Peeking out a bit, I can clean those up. But the less of those that I have to mess with, the better. And it's a lot easier to do it with chalk than it is with pencil. Okay, there's that. You guys got about a minute before we move on. You got it, Eddie. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out today. Okay.
we're going to jump in with some black. Oh, sorry. Before we do the black, we're going to do the white. Like it doesn't really matter too much. We can do the black or the white. But let's stay, to be, stay consistent, we're going to do the white, white parts of the hats. So cleaning up my number six flat. Okay, just scooping up some white. Now with the second layer, what we're going to notice, what we should notice, is that this gets nice and um, bright. The evenness, there's, there's a much better evenness, but of course, again, it's like with everything else on here, you can uh, do a third layer if you feel you need it. I don't know that we'll be doing the third layer together just because of, because of time, but that's an easy enough thing to do, right? Exactly what we're doing now, you're just going over and adding a second layer. A third layer. Right over the top of everything. Okay. Now, going over to my round number three. I think we used the round zero earlier, but it's okay. So again, I, yesterday, for those of you that were hanging out with me yesterday, I mentioned how uh, I think I solved at least most of all the scamming issues that were the scammers that were jumping on. So sorry, folks, real quick before I go into that story, grab my number three, and I'm going to come over to the little spots on this hat. So I think I had. I didn't see any scammers today on the, so on the discussion board, I have to go back and check. I don't, again, I don't want to speak a little too soon here, but um, scammers would come on here in the comments section and try to, you know, they would post links on here, basically saying, come watch the live session here, and they would post a link. They would do it also on the discussion board. Same thing they were doing here in the, in the comment section. They would do over to the discussion board, and a few people fell for it. I saw, right? They'd have, they'd be having a conversation with these scammers right there on the discussion board, and of course, I would delete it as soon as I saw it. So, but basically, I think what it was is that all of these, or the vast majority of these, were from one country. And I found out because I started doing a little bit of research. I would ban, so all these scammers that I would see, I would ban them. And anytime you ban somebody, Facebook keep, keeps a, a record of who you've banned. So a few days ago, I went on there to see how long the list was. and I, But I had an idea. I was like, hey, I wonder where are all these people coming from, right? So I go over, and sure enough, almost every single person was coming from a particular country. So what I did, went over to my Facebook business page settings and removed it. From being visible in that country and so today and yesterday had I think I had one scammer yesterday today I haven't seen any yet so I'm hoping that, that did it looks like that did it at least for the majority of them all right there we go a little bit of white in there. There we go. Very nice. I like that. Um, I think I probably could use a little spot over here. This area over here looks a little, a little bare, so I'm just going to add little spot in there there we go i like that better but okay moving on to the black i said we're going to kick it up a notch going back to my flat number six cleaning it up a bit grabbing some black
Pick your brushes wisely. Pick too large of a brush. And if you sneeze or breathe wrong, you'll find you just added paint to a section that you didn't want to add some, especially when you're doing like these more intricate parts, right? These little outlines and stuff. So be careful. So of course we're adding a second layer of paint over the pot. And grab some black and green and mix them together for the shoes. Let me see if I'm missing anything else with the black. Nope. So creating a dark shade of so this dark shade of green, right? Black and green together. All right, I'll start with this shoe over here. So I am noticing that my orange is a little transparent on the beards. So I am going to add a third layer of orange. We'll do that last though. One of the last steps we'll do. There we go. So take a moment on that. I'm going to step away from the laptop here for a moment. You guys got about two minutes. Tricked you on that one, huh? Two minutes. Okay, let's see, here we go guys. Let me, I'm gonna go and put up, somebody's asking about my virtual tip jar, so I'm gonna put that up. You'll see it there at the bottom of the page of the screen. 
Okay. So there's that. And let's see. Yeah, those those scammers are those scammers are annoying. Patricia Wright says, Wright family from Newfoundland, Canada. Awesome. Welcome, Wright family. Thank you for being here. You guys are awesome. Let's see. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, add another. Whoops. Let me close my door. Door opened up a bit. What we're going to do right now, though, is we're going to add another layer of the skin color. Okay. So if you guys remember what we mixed there, go ahead. Or if you still have some left over, go ahead and use that. But we're adding a second layer to everything that's skin toned. Okay. But give me a second. Let me close my door. All right. Not too many people here on the weekends, but um, I work in a professional, I have a, my studio in a professional building. I think I mentioned it earlier, if not yesterday, but anyway, so I'm in a professional building and sometimes people will walk up to the door and go, hey, not very many people on a Saturday though, so that's good. But okay, so here we go. Skin tone. What were our colors? If you have pink, yellow and white or red, white, yellow. Those combinations will work to give you a nice little base and then you could add brown or black or white to tone it in whichever direction you want. Okay, just cleaning up my number, number six flat brush here. Remember I use paper towels to take out some of that excess paint. Let me grab some more pink because I'm out. Oh, no, I'm not. I have some right here. Okay. What I do need is my white. So here we go. Mixing some more. Here's my pink. White. If you don't have pink, use that red and white. So pink and yellow. Sorry, pink and yellow. Mix those two together. Gives me a nice base. Grab some white. Grab some more white. Make sure you mix enough. And this, this next layer can look, it can be a little bit, a slightly different color than what you did on the original one. If you're remixing paint, no big deal. As long as it looks like a skin tone, we're good. And as long as, long as you have enough to do a complete layer, you're fine. Even if it doesn't match exactly on the original coat, you want each layer that you do to be completely the same color all the way through that one layer. That's the important part. Okay, here we go. Notice I'm using my flat brush this time, as opposed to my round. Either one will work. Okay, 
Switching over to my number three round. Right here. I'm going to use this same color, of course. Put some on the hands. If you want to make the tip smaller, pointier, and you scoop up the paint, press your brush against the plate, spin it. Makes that point easier, or smaller, and it's easier to make small lines or fill in little areas. There we go. And over here. We're going to be adding those balloons here in a little while. Okay. Okay. You have about a minute to go here. Really quick, let me demonstrate something to you guys. I still have some of those little chalk lines, right, around the edges. Just take a, taking a paper towel, dipping it in some in my my paint, it's, it's, uh, my paint water. That's why it looks green. Well, if I do this just lightly, any areas that I can still see the chalk disappears. Okay, so that's another one of the again. So the edges and stuff, right? where I drew originally out with that chalk. And you can see some of that chalk peeking around the edges. You just clean it right up. Okay, we're, I'm just demonstrating. And I, I, would, I would do this at the very, very end. Once the painting's nice and dry, I would do that to the entire canvas. If it's, as long as it's all dry, I can do this. Have a wet paper towel, and I can just kind of wipe everything down. All at one shot like this. And get rid of all those chalk lines. Okay, so little little tip right there. Okay, Karen Dorsey here, my pleasure. Uh, don't forget, folks, yeah, pictures. As far as the pictures are concerned, if you can send them to me on Messenger here on Painting with Jesse on Facebook, just go over to my Painting with Jesse page, go to the top where you can see a message, a little message button, hit that, then you can attach your pictures there, okay? I would greatly appreciate that for you to send me pictures of your projects. And then if you're on YouTube, and you, I mean, you can come over to Facebook and do this, do the same thing if you have a Facebook page, or you can email me directly at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com, okay? But all right, everybody, so let me take a little step back here. Here's what I'm going to do now. How much time do we got? All right, we still got a little time there. What I'm going to do, I can take a little yellow, and add some yellow over the top of everything. Okay, maybe we'll go and do that really quickly here. I'm gonna take my zero round brush, pick up, scoop up some yellow. This won't take very long. Just kind of quickly. Over my buckles, make them stand out a little bit more both on the shoes. And then Okay, buckle on my hat. Then the gold, can't forget the gold. All 
All right. So here's what we're going to do next. We're going to go ahead and work on those balloons. Now, there is some outline that we're going to do to some of this stuff. Like I mentioned, uh, the features on the face, there's a little bit of brown outlining that I did in there. I outlined the hats. Well, this one here a little bit, and then the other hat in a darker green. Uh, we're going to do that closer to the end. But what I want to do now is I want to talk about the balloons. Okay. So for those of you that are making the balloons, we're going to start with the strings first. The reason why we're going to put the strings down first is that we want, we want to make sure that they line up. If you start on the balloon first and you're a little over to the side in either direction, then your string has to be at an angle to connect to the hand, right? So if you accidentally put the balloon over to the right too far or over to the left too far, it's not going to look, it's not going to look just right. So what we want to do first is we want to add the little string. So you can do this with pencil chalk. I would recommend it, right? Doing, putting it down with, it with pencil or chalk. But all we're going to do is find the spot, like in this case over here, where you want the bottom part of your balloon to be. Kind of gauge it. And it doesn't have to be perfect, perfectly straight, but you want it pretty straight, right? So there we go. Okay, take a look at it. If it's slightly angled or whatever, as long as it's just a little bit, you're okay. Okay, then we're going to do the same thing over here. So I want this balloon, they're going to be at about the same level. So about right here. Okay. And then we run it down. Okay, of course, if you don't like it, you could always erase it. Okay, now it's a lot easier to follow that, to paint over that. Now you can do this with a couple a couple of ways. You can do one, use one of your round brushes, your round number zero if you've got one, right? Uh, however, as long as one of your flat brushes, and in my case, I think I can use my number six flat. As long as one of your brushes can, as long as you can make the edge really nice and thin, like this, but or but when you scoop up the paint, you press it up against the canvas, and it presses those bristles in really tight. You can use that, and this is a little easier to use than a round brush. So I'm gonna take some, whoops, picked up some green by accident. I'm gonna take some of this white paint, find a spot on my plate, I just put it down. I'll grab some water with the brush. I dip it into the water. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing some water with my paint. Make it nice and uh, easier to flow, easier to work, easier to work with. Okay, and again, I press down on the plate like this. It makes that edge really skinny. Now, let me take a step back, make sure my line's pretty straight. I'm going to use my hand. I'm going to press my hand up against the canvas here for stability, or I'm going to press my finger down. Now, I'm going to barely use the tip of those bristles. I'm barely touching the canvas. Now, this is going to be tricky for me to show you without blocking what I'm doing. Um, so hopefully, well, I can't, I think it'll be easier to see on this one. So, but I'm gonna try it, on, try it here. I'm just, again, putting my finger, as long, as long as all this is dry here, I can press my finger up against the canvas and use it as a stabilizer. It helps to hold your breath a little. Okay, but once you get going with your line, commit to it. Just go. Okay, if you're if you're stopping and starting along the way, your line's going to get choppy. Okay, um, you might want to practice first on a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard. That's up to you. I would definitely recommend practicing first. But again, a little, little bit of water, add a little bit of water to your paint. And then you're not grabbing a whole lot of paint. You're barely going to use just the very point of your bristles. So you press that brush down into the plate, making that, making sandwiching all those bristles together. Then once again, and I'll try again, I'm going to try to do this so you guys can see, but this is tricky. Use my finger here, my hand. Let me see if I can do it this way. 
No, I like it like this better. Straight down and... Once you commit, try to go all the way through, okay? You want these at about the same level, right? Your balloons are gonna be at about the same spot. Leave some space up on top. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and draw your, I'm gonna draw my little four leaf clover, clover over there. I'm gonna make it a little larger and give you, give you a close up here in a moment. First, I'm gonna start with the uh, leaves on the bottom. They're almost like hearts, like you're starting hearts. Okay, there's one, this comes up, okay. That's what this looks like right now. Again, almost like we're doing hearts. Okay, and then of course you got the little stem that's got to connect to your string. Okay, there's one balloon. Okay, and then of course you got the little horseshoe over on this side. So we'll start with the bottom part. So all you've got are two U's here. Got the U on the outside and the U on the inside. That's what we can start with. U on the outside. Okay. Little U on the inside. U on the outside and a U on the inside. And then you got the little, whoops, probably made that too big. Let me clean that up. Went in a little too far. There we go. Okay, and then the little bottom part of the balloon on both parts. My pleasure, Patricia, my pleasure. Thank you for hanging out today. So awesome. So in a little bit, we'll talk about the gold. Melissa, we're not done with the gold yet. We're gonna add the little, we're gonna draw in so I'm going to give you a close-up of the original. We're going to do this when we do the outlining in brown. We're going to do it together, but if you want to jump ahead and do this part, no worries. All I did was took my, my little zero round brush, took some brown, and I just drew in some coins, some, some of the edges. Some of these are just circles. Just imagine, right, you're looking at a bunch of different coins in different directions. So that's what I did there. And then I outline with the same color for the most part, outline the noses. Um, and then I took some green, some dark green and outlined the green parts on this hat. I outlined the clover there and outlined so, uh, parts of the green on my hat and the clover there also. Okay, again, if you, if you wanna jump in ahead and do that, that's what you would be doing, okay? But let's go ahead and paint in our, really quickly, we'll go ahead and add some color to the balloons. So just taking my number three, taking some green, sorry, my number six flat. Just gonna take some green, whoops, grab some black in there too. It's all good, easy fix. Let's try that again. Some green, come in here.
There we go. I'm going to take some orange. I'm going to take the same brush. I'm going to take a little bit of orange and a little bit of yellow. Mix the two together, orange and yellow. Add those in here. Okay, so now in here, the paint that I put down for the strings is dry. I can take paper towel with a little bit of water in there, remove the chalk lines that I, that I drew, and all, now all we have left are the strings, okay, right? So we'll come in and add a little more detail to these guys, if you guys want, right, the outlining and the dots and stuff, but I'm going to take my little zero and take, I'm going to take some brown. Where is my brown? Give me one second. But I had my brown over here. I do not. Give me one sec while I grab that. Sonia Perez from Chicago. Chicago's in the house. What's happening, Sonia? Yep. Bring out a little bit of brown. Don't need much. Okay, so I have this bit of brown here on my plate. Scooped up. Poured up. Whoops. whoops my, my microphone. Can't forget the mic. So I put out more on my plate than I, than I need. But uh, that's okay. Straight brown. I'm gonna grab some of this. Find a spot on my plate. See how my my mix plate gets super, super messy. Now I dip my brush in the water. Bring some of that water over, and I mix it in with the paint. We're gonna do some outlining here. We're gonna do a little bit of drawing for the coins, and then some outlining. All right. Don't want this too runny, but we do want it <clears throat> to flow almost like ink. So what this does, that water in the paint makes it easier to draw with. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, and I'm going to try to do this holding up the canvas. So let me grab this guy and bring it up. So what I'll, all I'm going to do is this. Just draw a little... Some of the outlines of some of the coins. Some of the some of the coins you're going to see them sideways, right? Others you see like just the edge. For some you see just the top. So all you're really going to do is that. Just use your imagination a little bit. You can even hold up some of the some coins. Look at them in different at different angles. And what would they look like if they're sitting in a pot of gold?
Okay? Something like that. It's a bunch of little squiggly lines. Okay? Once you've done that, taking your same color of brown with the water in it, you want to spin your brush as you pull it away from the from the plate or whatever you're using. And you're just going to go through and you're going to outline. Now the nose is what's in the center. You know, it's prominent. So when you do the nose, you want to outline all the way around it. Okay? When you do the cheeks, you only do the side. And you stop where it connects to the to the nose. So nose. All the way around. Cheeks. Whoops, and this one's a little out of shape. Little cheek right here. Maybe the maybe the hat comes down a little more on that side. Still works, I think. So nose all the way around. And then the cheeks. Of course, you also want to do the hands. Although I just noticed I didn't do the hands on the original. That's all right. Especially here around the beard. Make the hands a little bit more prominent. I don't have to do them around the, on the inside or the black. Part of the pot is the contrast of the black against the skin tone makes that stand out without having to outline it in brown. But you can if you want. Okay, there we go. So there are my outlines in brown. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take. A darker green. What I'm doing is I'm just going to scoop up some of this dark green. If you don't, if you just want a little bit of contrast, if you don't have a darker green, you can, you can add a little bit of black to it. Just a little tiny bit. You don't need a lot. Just barely touching the black, bringing that over. I'm going to mix enough. I'm going to outline the balloon there and also the hats, the green part of these two hats. So mixing that paint, maybe add a little bit of water to it. Looks like we're going to go a little bit past three hours here, but that's all right. So just going through and what this does is allows the green parts to stand out against the background. Okay, I'm going to outline the shamrock. Okay. I'm not outlining the white parts, although we could. That one, that's not a problem if you might want to out, also outline. For example, be, um, next to the white spots on the edges of the hat, you could. They're little, little caps.
All this does is it allows it defines it. The outline is defining these areas. Okay. I could also take a deeper orange or even red or an orange mix and outline the beards if I wanted to, making those stand out against the background. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of brown. I could have done this when I did the face and the hands. I'm just going to take a little bit of brown here with some water. I could also do this with red if I wanted to. And I'm going to outline my balloon. Actually, an orange red would work better. Oh, my green balloon. Got to got to outline my green balloon also. Got a little ahead of myself there. So a little green, little black. Still using my zero. Add a little bit of green down here to the to the base. Add a little layer of green inside rather quickly. Don't want to keep you guys too much longer. For those of you that are still hanging out, I do appreciate you guys being here, hanging out, creating with me. Okay. I'm going to take another, take a little orange and yellow layer to add to the inside of my orange balloon. All right, there we go. So the very last thing I would do, besides painting the bottom edge and adding little, the little uh, dots up here to my balloons, and I'm gonna do that really quickly here with my three brush, some white paint, right? I can also do it with the back part of the handle. This is a little quicker. Just dip the end right into the paint. Okay. Pick your little spots, as many 
dots as you'd like. Okay, over here. By varying the pressure, you can vary the size somewhat. Press a little harder, you make a bigger circle. Press a little more lightly and you can get a smaller circle. Or of course you could use the tip of the bristles like this and either one works. Okay. But that is pretty much all the time we have today. What I would do, here's what I would do if I was going to refine my painting. I would add another layer of paint to my beard, maybe another layer of paint to the facial features in the hands, but I like the way that it looks, okay? Uh, you guys can see the difference. And again, there's different. There's a difference in the paint types that I use here. That's a glossier paint, so it's a little shinier. Um, this is a little bit, this is more of a matte finish, but uh, layering is the key to making things really stand out and pop out. Once everything's dry, I would take a paper towel to remove any of my chalk lines that you can still see, right? A little, little water on a paper towel. And then I would just go around. Now, I'm not going to do this to the whole thing because some areas are still a little bit wet. Oh, and I forgot to add the little, the little bit there at the bottom of that um, balloon. So let me go ahead and do that now. I'll look at your comments here in a second. I won't leave without looking at your comments, questions, and things like that. I'll talk about brush care here in just a moment also. I, I talked about it yesterday. But for those of you that are new, I'll, we'll talk about it here again. So here was what I would do. I just kind of go around, cleaning up all the areas that you can still see some of that chalk peeking through around the edges. And again, if, if the whole thing was totally dry, I could just grab one big towel. Don't want it soaking, just want, want it damp. And then I would just go through. And kind of do this. Just concentrating on those edges where I can see some of that chalk coming through. I'm not going to touch those up there. Okay. I would sign it. Then I would paint the bottom. I would flip it over, paint that bottom, let it dry. And you're all done. You'd be in business. All right. But okay, guys. Okay, Gloria, you got it. Thank you for hanging out today. You enjoy the rest of your weekend as well. Tabitha Jolene Roscoe Kennedy. You're answering somebody, I believe, who's asking about a uh, picture where they send your pictures. So don't forget, folks, please send them to me uh, Yeah, via, me via Messenger here on Facebook. You can also email them to me, to me directly, especially if you're on YouTube. You can email me those uh, pictures through paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. That's paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. Um, and then uh, I still have my, I have my uh, virtual tip jar information there at the bottom of the page. For those of you that are interested in helping supporting the page that way, that would be fantastic. Um, and then don't forget to check in on my Painting with Jesse page. Go over to the page when you have a chance, check in. Don't forget to check out all the events that are coming here soon over the next few weeks. I'll be adding more to the calendar, so make sure you guys are paying attention to that. But as far as brush care, let me take a drink of my now cold coffee. I'm going to basically demonstrate with one of my brushes. A little bit of water, maybe a little bit of uh, mild detergent like dish soap. Because these my brushes have been sitting inside water, all that paint on there is still wet. I would just rinse these off. Rinse it off in a little bit of soapy water. You don't always use soap, but I do recommend it. Helps clean them up a little bit better. Once you're all done with your brush, once you're all done, you want to reshape it. Put it, shape it back, right? Reform it back to its original shape, okay? You do this with all of your brushes. When you're done, you either store them laying on their side or you store them like in a cup with the bristles pointing up. You don't want to want to lay them upside down and leave them like that with the weight of the handle pressing down on those bristles. They will get distorted and your brushes won't last as long. Okay. So anyway, if you do that all every time you paint, 
your brushes will last you a pretty long time, even with the more, uh, you know, the cheaper brushes. Of course, the more expensive the brush, the more important it is to do this to it, to take care of it so it lasts a really long time. You don't want to have to keep buying new brushes all the time, okay? But anyway, all right, everybody. Thank you for joining in today. I really hope you liked the session. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next week on the little horse painting. This is a guy right here behind me, okay? Make sure if you guys have any questions, send them to me by messenger. If you guys have suggestions, I'd like to see what you guys want to paint. As long as it's something that's kind of widely appreciated, you know, widely appealing, um, I'm very open to, to, to doing it. But if it's something really obscure and very few people would like, then that, you know, that's less likely that I'll do it. But I definitely like to see your uh, suggestions. So anyway, everyone, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Have an awesome rest of the weekend. Please don't forget to send me pictures of your masterpieces. All right, everyone. See you all very soon. Bye now.